Brian at RealFixesRealFast.com. Today we're working on our 01 Mercury Grand Marquis with a 4.6 engine. The original complaint was the check engine light was on, but it was running fine. When we scanned it, there were no current codes, but there was one code stored in memory, and it was P0133, and that indicates a oxygen sensor heater circuit problem, bank one, sensor one. Now probably the most common thing to do when you get this kind of a code is just simply replace the oxygen sensor. And actually most of the time that's correct and that will usually fix the problem. They're very common to go out. Now this one only has 50 some thousand miles on it so we wanted to make sure that was the problem. So we're going to show you how we tested the heater portion of the oxygen sensor but at the same time we're going to test the oxygen sensor. Now you actually can do this with one scanner or lab scope but we've actually got two set up so that we can show you a little bit better on the video. Now of course the first thing you need to do is be sure you're on the right wires. Now looking at the electrical diagram we see that the heater portion of the circuit on the ground side is what we want to monitor because the computer turns on the ground to turn these heaters on. So as you can see in the diagram that signal is coming from pin 93 and 94 out of the PCM. One is a red with white and the other one is a yellow with blue. Now the bulkhead connector for the computer is down there We've actually found pin 93 and 94 with the correct wires and we've spliced into them. And now we're going to go back to our instruments. Now we're hooked up directly from the wires going from the computer which should command the heater portion of the oxygen sensor on. We're actually tapped into them and the key is off. And you can see we're reading almost 12 volts. Our battery's down a little bit, that's why our voltage is down. But we're reading almost 12 volts and remember the key is off. Now this is a stored movie. I'm going to advance this movie so that you can see what happens. Remember the key is off and I move the movie forward. Now this is where we turn the heater on, turn the key on that turns the power on and gives the ground to the heater circuit. And then as we come forward after a few seconds you can see that the computer then pulses on and off, on and off the heater portion of that circuit. And it just advances that way. Now we've actually got our genesis set up on the scanner and we're looking at the oxygen sensor bank 1, sensor 1, bank 2, sensor 1. You can see that it is actually switching but it's not switching like it should be. It's not switching from 0 to 9 volts. This is heater bank 2, sensor 1 and you can see that it is switching. Now on this scanner, in case you're not familiar with it, this is kind of like a zoomed in portion so you can see it switching much faster and then this is where it slows it down so that you can see it over a better period of time. So the bottom one is switching. It's switching from 0 to 0.9 and it is consistently going up and down. And the top one is only switching from like about 0.5 to 0.7, somewhere in that range and it's not switching nearly as often as it should. Now every once in a while you run into some inconsistencies with the computer codes and what your actual findings are. Now this one had a code saying the heater portion of the circuit was bad, but we just showed you the evidence where the, actually the heater is actually being commanded on, the voltages are right, and it's working fine, but the sensing part of the sensor is actually not correct. It's not switching like it should. Now if this code came in and you simply replaced the oxygen sensor, you probably would have fixed the problem but you wouldn't have actually known what you just fixed. By testing it this way we could see that the heater was actually not the problem. It's working correctly. But it was the sensor part of the oxygen sensor that was actually not working right. So sometimes codes may be right generally and not exactly right specifically. Again, seek out the evidence, find the evidence, and the evidence will lead you to the problem. So the key here is actually understanding the system, how it's supposed to work. You've got an oxygen sensor that has a heated circuit in it to heat it up and warm it up faster so it'll start working sooner. And then you have the sensor side. And there's codes for all of that. So we can actually stumble around in the dark not knowing what's going on or we can actually test it. If you have your instruments and you can test it and you understand the system, you'll find the evidence and the evidence will clearly point to what the problem is. Now at this point we're going to replace the oxygen sensors. There's only one sensor that's reporting a failure right now, but they're both the same age. They've got the same amount of time, the same amount of miles, and exposure to problems. 
So it's very likely that the other one might be reporting a problem very soon. So we're going to actually replace it so we've got an equal reading, a balanced reading from both sides of the engine. Now we're looking at it live. We just turned the key on. You can see our voltage dropped down to zero. So it is turned on. Now this is with the new oxygen sensors. Now you can see this is going up and down because I need to change my sweep. So I'm going to go up here to sweep. Change our sweep setting to 10 seconds. And now you can see the pattern where it is switching it on and off. Now you've got two patterns, the yellow and the green. And they're both offset by this much. If I go over here and move the green one down to where it's laying on top of the yellow one, then you can see they're both laying superimposed on top of each other. So now we're going to go from our lab scope over to the scanner. And you can see on the scanner now, our bank one, sensor one, is switching. We're going from 0 to 0.8. The other one is 0 to 0.9. But you can see we got much better switching pattern over here. Now the computer is monitoring all this and it's actually looking for the oxygen sensors to respond fast, quickly, in a certain amount of time. They should reach their lower limits and their upper limits and switch back and forth evenly in a comparative basis the same. When it sees that one is different, and it's not reaching its limits or it's not switching as fast, the first thing that might be suspecting is that the heater is not working. So what the computer might be assuming here is that one sensor is working fine, the other one appears to be sluggish, and this was on a cold start, we had just started it. So it's probably setting that code because it thinks that the heater circuit is actually sluggish. Now the other scenario could be like if you were driving down the road and the engine was actually up to normal operating temperature and then the sensor started responding sluggishly compared to the other one. Then it would probably set a code that the sensor is actually a problem rather than the heater. But since this was a cold start, we had just started, everything was cold, the heater is the first thing that should have kicked in and it didn't switch fast enough so it's suspecting that the heater is actually bad. But it's not the heater that's bad in this case, it was actually the sensor. So again, we just need to resist the urge to throw parts at it. Now the reason being is if you threw an oxygen sensor at this at the very beginning, you would have fixed it, but you wouldn't have actually known what you were fixing and why. So when you actually understand the system, and you understand how to get the information you need to get the evidence that you need, then you can fix this with a high level of confidence that you've actually truly fixed the problem.